Welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at setting up uh, cue points in Tractor the easy way. DJ Rubo. So I've gotten a couple of questions about how I set up uh, cue points. So I thought I would go through a quick video showing you uh, how I do that. There are three things that you have to think about when you're setting up cue points in any application. The first one is for transition purposes. So getting from one song out of that song and then into the next one. So the first one's about transitions. So we need to be able to set up cue points to make that process easy. The second thing is for uh, being able to cut up or mash up the song. Normally for me, when I'm mixing, you know, I don't just play one song and play the entire song. Normally what I do is I'm interested in getting to the highlights, the things that are of real interest and about that song and then moving on to the next song so you know if the average song is four minutes say you know I might only play a minute and a half or you know maybe two minutes per song and then I'm on to the next one so I want to be able to set up my cue points in a way that you know in addition to being able to transition into that song you know, I want to get to the highlights and get out of it. So I'll show you how to do that. <clears throat> and then lastly, uh, cue points can be set up for performance purposes. So maybe you want to chop up the vocals and do something interesting with, with that. Or maybe, you know, you want to do your own finger drumming. So you'll, you know, you can put a cue point on a kick and a snare and then you know do finger drumming you know I don't do a whole lot of performance oriented stuff um, at least that way uh, but that would be the third consideration for cue points is for performance purposes so with that in mind let's take a look at setting up cue points in Tractor so I have two songs um, already kind of in the queue Let's see here. Let's go back to the beginning. And oh, yep. So normally a song is broken out into a couple of different components. Um, there's usually an intro. Uh, if it's a vocal song, then I'll have a verse a chorus, a bridge, a break. And, you know, I'll do another video where we kind of break out song structure. So normally for transition purposes, we want to, especially if we're dealing again with sort of dance oriented stuff, uh, it's usually pretty easy because most songs, dance songs have some sort of an intro. And it's, the intro is normally instrumental under most circumstances like this. <laughs> Or like, like that. So the first cue point that we're going to set up is just at the intro, very beginning of the song. Now, um, I do one thing here, as opposed to just using the standard cue, cue point. You'll notice in Tractor there's a couple of different ones. There's a cue, there's a fade in, there's a fade out. There's a you know, a load, the grid, and a loop. The grid marker is already set up when I do my analysis, which you can see here. Uh, blue, this one is just a normal cue point. For an intro, I am going to set it to the fade in. And I'm going to do that so that it's a visual representation. So I vis visibly know, you know, where I want that song to begin. And even more so, I know that this song is a 16 beat intro, so I'm gonna put 16 beats here. 
there we go. So I know when I'm doing my transition that I'm going to, I have 16 beats before the actual song starts. And I can use that when I'm sort of mentally calculating how I want to transition the song. Now, if I'm looking, one of the things I really like about Tractor is it's very easy to see sort of where the different sections of the song are. And if we're just, you don't know anything else, chances are I'm going to be putting cue points where there's a visual difference in the song. And I'll know automatically that it, that's an easy way to break the song out. So if I come here, this is actually the beginning of the song. I'm going to put two there, or, two, or just a normal cue point. I can see this looks like some a break. Now, why, how did I, why did I screw that up? So I turned off my snap and my quantize. Definitely having that on while you're uh, setting up your cue points is, is pretty handy. There we go, now, now the drop is where this visual representation of that kink is sort of coming in. Ready? Bang. Now there looks like there's a mini drop here, and we love mini drops. Two, three, four, four. Or a mini break, and then the drop. And because this song is so uh, short, I probably will. That'll be my last cue point. Now there's a couple of things you can do here. One is that you can just leave this last cue point as just a regular cue point, or you can change it from just a normal to a fade out. Now the one caveat if you're going to do that, especially if you're setting up cue points this way is, when you load in your song, your next song, and you have this cue point set to fade out, as soon as it hits the fade out, on your next song, it's automatically going to start mixing. So visually, this might you know work for you and be helpful, but you might not want it to automatically um, mix into the next song. In which case, you can just leave it as the uh, regular cue point. Now, one other thing that you can do, and I typically only do this in, in Tractor, is if I know. Like that's mostly an instrumental, there's no vocals. I will set that to a loop. There we go. <clears throat> um, other applications like Serato, Virtual DJ, have uh, and um, Record Box, they have uh, they make looping a lot easier on the fly, at least to me. So uh, I don't typically, I won't do that if I'm in other applications, but for Tractor, this is something I, I use pretty regularly. So this song is done. Let's do the next song. Listen to it. Now, I know that this is going to be, this looks like this is gonna be the intro. So the main thing I need to do is now I'll just know how many beats it is. So I'm going to count. So I know that that's going to be 16 beats. So I'll just put that 16 in there. And that looks like the be actual beginning of the song so I'll put a cue point there and I might even go so far as to make that a loop because I know and again I I typically look at a song in 16 beat chunks or four bars um, most songs break out really well that way so we had a 16 beat you know intro here we got a 16 beat loop Now, 
this is all pretty much the same stuff. So I'm not really going to put a, uh, put any loops in there or put any cue points. But there looks, again, visually, I can just see that there's a break here. So I'm going to probably put a cue point there. Now, there was something else that was kind of going on in here. In this break, there's actually two parts. So I might even put another cue point in the middle there. Three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, and that's probably gonna be it. And again, with this, this last cue point, you can, if you really want to, you can make it a fade out so that you know um, that that's the end of the song and that's where the transition is going to occur. So now how can I, I've created my cue points, how can I leverage this? Well, if I'm, let's go back to here. <laughs> First thing I did is I shortened up the the intro from 16 beats to 18. So you can already see how I've like I've shortened up the song quite a bit. Maybe I want to go back to the drop. Now when the drop comes, I'm going to start my next song. Anyway, so that's kind of a, a quick tutorial on how to set up cue points, how to leverage them. So in our case, we said in the very beginning that there were three purposes for setting up cue points. One was for setting up transitions, which is the primary purpose. Uh, two was to create sort of your break out this section or break out the song in a section so that we can mash it up and put create kind of our own version of that song on the fly in addition to you know, shortening it up in my case. And then thirdly was sort of a performance piece, which I, I didn't add in this video, but I gave some, some examples of where you can um, you know, create some cue points for per performance purposes. So that's, the, uh, that's how I would set up cue points in Tractor. I'm gonna do some other, I'll do another tutorial for setting up Serato and um, Record Box and Virtual DJ because they each have sort of their own nuances for how to do them. And, um, you know, if you like this video and you found any value in it, then uh, make sure to like the video. If you have any questions, as always, um, please comment. And if you have a question, I'm pretty good about answering questions very quickly. And then um, lastly, subscribe. You know, lots of great content uh, coming up. There's some cool reviews. I have sort of in the queue and lots more in terms of how to DJ. So with that, I will say cheers and have a great day.